How's it going? It is all the news all the time. My name is Adam. We're looking at some interesting news today, uh, carrying on with the Bud Light story. And it's it's not going well for uh, Bud Light and Anheuser-Busch. It's just not going well in any way, shape or form. Uh, we're looking at this from ABC News. Uh, they're saying it's like being thrown in their faces. Uh, Bud Light salespeople say the boycott is hurting commission. These are normal people and they're getting hammered by this. But that doesn't mean uh, that we should stop what we're doing uh, because I think they can move to other beers and other, uh, other products. And I don't think uh, that uh, Bud Light has had enough as yet. Let's have a look. Salespeople promoting Bud Light for a Florida-based distributor have grown accustomed to car horns, middle fingers and jokes amid a weeks-long boycott. I think that means weeks and weeks long boycott, it's like six weeks now, but say they've struggled to ignore thousands of dollars in lost commission pay to sales supervisors at the distributor told ABC News. They are losing a lot of money, uh, but this is, you know, this is what happens when you do this sort of thing. A typical salesperson at the distributor made roughly 2,000 less in May than he or she would have made uh, over each of the previous two years, suffering primarily from a decline in Bud Light sales that reached as much as 60% over the week ending on Memorial Day. That was a disaster, a disaster for them. They lost all that money, uh, the sales supervisor said. This has really, really killed a lot of the guys who are commission-based. Uh, this is a weird uh, model, weird business model that Bud Light is using. They don't pay their own um, employees. They're commissioning it out to independent contractors, and it's those people who are getting hammered. Uh, but the thing about independent contractors is they can break their contract quite easily and move to a different product. And if that happens, uh, you could be looking at Bud Light shutting down permanently. If they don't have the distribution network and people are not going to work for them to deliver the beers and stock the shelves, then they're literally going to go out of business. They're just going to shut down completely. Once it reaches a tipping point, they will have not enough people to put the stuff on the shelves and people won't buy it because it's not on the shelves. They're not buying it now, but they won't buy it because it's not on the shelves and the company will collapse. It's a very weird situation that they're heading into. They're down 20% in terms of uh, stock value. They've lost uh, $27 billion, <laughs> $27 billion. That is, oh, that is so much money. That's a terrifying amount of money. Uh, the sales of Bud Light have rec recorded declines for the seven consecutive weeks after a product endorsement from Dylan Mulvaney, the uh, Darth Vader of advertising, a transgender influencer, sparked backlash among many conservatives. <laughs> Indeed so. Uh, the boycott gained momentum. Meanwhile, after the initial response from the company was perceived as conciliatory by some LGBTQ advocates. I can have a little look at this uh, in a minute. We've got a crazy thing up here. Oh, what is this? 2SLGBTQ+. I mean, what is this? Is that a Wi-Fi password? What's going on up there? Uh, prompting frustrations on the left and on the right as well, and in the middle. In fact, everywhere. These losses have slashed the income of salespeople who work for roughly 500 independent wholesalers. Yeah, that's, I think, their main problem that sell Anheuser-Busch beverages to restaurants, bars, and grocery stores, according to interviews with two distributors, uh, two sales supervisors and uh, supervisors and Freerix, Freerix. The sales supervisors and distributors declined to share their names because they don't want to be publicly identified, speaking about the financial consequences of the boycott. Well, yeah, it's all not going really badly for them, like really badly. Ah, oh, it's just, it's shocking. Compensation for salespeople differs widely between different distributors, but a typical salesperson makes about 60,000 a year. Nice, very nice. Including 20,000 in variable pay that depends largely on commission. Right, uh, good people are gonna start leaving because they aren't making money. This is the issue. If you, if you lose your distributors, people are not gonna put the stuff on the shelves. If there's no stuff on the shelves, they're not gonna buy it. You can't buy stuff that's not there. Uh, that's that's uh, what I learned in marketing class. Uh, <laughs> on an earnings call last month, Al Hazabush, InBev CEO Michael Dukris, acknowledged the strain that the boycotts placed on workers in the field uh, caused by your incompetence, my friend. Uh, your incompetence. The situation has impacted our people. They're not your people. They're independent contractors, and especially our frontline workers, the delivery drivers, sales reps, our wholesalers, bud owners, bud owners. 
don't know, and servers. These people are the fabric of our business. And they're not, are they? They're independently contracting. You don't want to employ them. You don't want to provide uh, employment benefits. You want to, if I might say so, you might, well, you want to exploit them and uh, not have to pay for their benefits and outsource it in a very, um, I would say, very dodgy and uh, very underhand sort of way. Uh, but that's this, uh, but these are the your people. These are our people, and especially our frontline workers, the delivery drivers, sales reps. Uh, they're the fabric of our business. They're our neighbors, family members, friends. They're in every community in America. Duke has added, we've been doing everything we can to support our teams, apart from giving them enough money and uh, obviously running the, com the company in a competent way, <laughs> which is what is the problem. Anheuser-Busch employs over 18,000 people, so they employ 18,000 people, and our independent wholesaler partners that's, that's a, a, like a long phrase to say people we don't have to provide benefits for, have an additional 47,000 valued colleagues. Uh -huh, so more than double, more than double are outsourced. The current situation has impacted our people, uh, not really your people, and especially our frontline workers, including deliver, delivery drivers and sales reps. These people are our neighbours, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we get all that uh, caused by this guy, <laughs> which is frankly, frankly absurd. It's just, I mean, the more I look at this guy, the more absurd it, it just looks. It's just the absurdity of it. And uh, it's gone down uh, by 26% over the week. 26%. Uh, it's extraordinary. And uh, compared to the same period a year ago, it's not going well. Sales have seen massive declines between 6 and 26% over the same month. It's all going shockingly badly for them. And... Um, to be honest, I have no sympathies whatsoever. No sympathies for them. Uh, <laughs> but what else is going on? What else is going on? I was looking at this. Uh, Dylan Mulvaney, where is he? There, there, well, should we have a look at him again? Uh, there he is. <laughs> is now a lesbian, hoping to be impregnated by another woman. Uh, let's have a little think about that for a second. Uh, yep, that makes no sense to me either. <laughs> no sense whatsoever. And just what? Hey, um, we could talk about basic biology, but um, I think it's going to go over his head. Uh, Dylan Mulvaney now identifies as a lesbian and is hoping to be impregnated by another woman. Right? I could hope to fly to the moon on, on a, I don't know, on a, <laughs> on a rocket made of oranges, but you know. Um, says Sky News host James McPherson. Mulvaney is a man, <laughs> correct? Identifying as a woman. Correct. Claiming to be a lesbian. Jesus Christ, what is going on? Hoping to be impregnated by a woman, uh, Mr. McPherson said. <laughs> I mean, what? I mean, there's a sentence I didn't think I'd be saying uh, in my history of ever. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just uh, shocked and horrified by the whole thing. I made a little PowerPoint. Let me, let me show you a PowerPoint presentation. So here we have a uh, short PowerPoint uh, presentation that I made, which is called the Dylan Mulvaney Timeline of Weirdness, uh, which I think you might appreciate. Uh, it's only seven slides, and this is slide number one. See, PowerPoint have changed. Now you've got like this bubbling river. Oh, didn't have that when I was at school. All right, let's have a little look uh, at the timeline of weirdness. First of all, uh, Dylan in the early days. There he is. And uh, he's straight as an arrow, as you can tell from his glittery sequined top. Uh, I think there's there's some questions being asked at this early early stage, isn't there? Uh, I will ask all the gentlemen viewers: Have you got a sparkly, uh, shimmery sequin top in your cupboard? No, I didn't think you did. No, I didn't. Right. <laughs> so this is the early days. And uh, what do we got next? We got Dylan, the straight guy. Uh, he's uh, he's a straight guy, and this is the photo that proves it. Um, although I'm questioning this photo already because it's this midriff bit. I'm thinking, I've not seen a straight guy walking around like that in my life. Uh, but let me know if I'm wrong on that one. So this is when Dylan was a straight guy. And <laughs> moving on. And now we have Dylan the gay guy. And uh, brilliant. So we've got, he looks quite sharp. I like this look. This is nice. Uh, Book of Mormon. He's obviously in the uh, play, The Book of Mormon. He's a gay guy. Looks great. Nothing wrong with that. Brilliant. Uh, great, like this very much, very good. And uh, what we got next? Um, hmm. See now, now it's gone. <laughs> it's gone horribly wrong. Uh, we got Dylan the trans guy. Oh, okay. Well, not sure about that whatsoever. 
uh, whatsoever. And uh, <laughs> not sure about that. And uh, what we've got to, now we've got Dylan the lesbian, right? Now we've got Dylan the lesbian. Yes, I'm very much not sure about this entirely. And um, yeah, I was I was thinking. Oh, I don't know why this slide is in there. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, what's going on there? Uh, who knows? Well, that's our little PowerPoint presentation. And uh, yeah, as you can see here from uh, Sky News uh, AU Australia, uh, Dylan Mulvaney is now a lesbian. Uh, this is after suffering a lull in the clicks department coming from Megan Kelly. Trans activist uh, Dylan Mulvaney, or Gender Bosra, was going through a lull in the clicks department before coming out as lesbian. This is according to uh, Megan Kelly. The trans icon, oh, he's an icon now, is he? Recently admitted to being a little bit romantically interested in women. Well... I'm not sure they're going to be interested in you. Uh, during a video posted on TikTok, so I'm a lesbian, <laughs> I guess is what Dylan is saying. And Ms. Kelly told Sky News Australia host Paul Murray. Uh, Ms. Kelly suggested Mulvaney's recent admission was driven by a drop-off in social media engagement. Well, yeah, because who wants to uh, engage with a guy if he can cause you $27 billion of loss? Uh, apparently, Dylan went through a lull in the clicks department, so it came up <laughs> with another thing Dylan could be that would make the news circuit cycle. Uh, there you go. So yeah, now he's now he's a lesbian somehow. Doesn't that make him like a straight guy? Like, if if you're a guy who identifies as a woman but is a lesbian, aren't you just a straight guy in a dress? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I do not know. And now it seems the LGBTQ uh, acronym. Uh, if I can call it that, or is it a backronym? No, it's an acronym, uh, has changed again. Now we've got 2SLGBTQ+. I don't think the colon's involved, but probably will be next week. Uh, what does it mean? What, <laughs> what is this? No, it's not a Wi-Fi password. No, it's not the uh, location to the uh, lost city of Atlantis. It's an acronym, it says, uh, that stands for Two Spirit, right? And then we're back into the normal lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer or questioning and additional sexual orientations gender identities god help us all uh, god help us all and uh <laughs> why is all this so uh let me know if you're going to use that as your wi-fi password and obviously the address so i can log in that'd be great uh so if there's any questions uh i think that'll be everything and i will catch you guys later